In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to draw a cat with pastels. We'll start with a contour line drawing using white pastel pencil on Canson Mitant's pastel paper. We'll work on the smoother side of the surface. We'll start in the area of the eyes since this will be the focal point, and we'll start with a light application of light blue. Over the top, we'll add a bit of Van Dyke Brown for a bit of variety, and to darken the value slightly, we'll add an application of dark gray. A few bits of cobalt blue are also added. We're working quickly here, just applying various colors to build up depth in the color, and of course to develop the colors that are observed. We'll add a bit of lighter value on the lower portion of the eye, and to do this we'll apply a bit of the white pastel pencil over the top. We'll add a couple of highlights before proceeding any further with the white pastel pencil. And then we can develop some of the darker values. We'll start with the pupil, and for this we'll apply a black pastel pencil. Around the edges there's a dark outline, and there's a few dark shadows on the upper portion of the eye around the highlights. With the blending stop, we can go back in and blend some of these applications to make more of a smoother appearance. We're just basically working the pastel applications into the tooth of the paper. We'll soften up the edges around the pupil as well. And then we can pull some of that dark black into areas of the eye, darkening the value in areas. We'll go back over the top with a few more applications of our colors, including light blue and a bit more white at the bottom portion of the eye. and then back with the blending stomp to darken up some of the values further before moving on to the next eye. We'll approach this eye with the same procedure. We'll start with an application of light blue, a bit of Van Dyke brown, and some dark gray. We'll make the bottom portion of the eye a bit lighter, and then we'll add the highlights. Then we can focus on the darker values and the darker areas of the eye. We'll address these again with the black pastel pencil. We'll add a bit of shadow just underneath the eyelid and then blend these applications with the blending stop. The blending stop works the pastel material into the tooth of the paper, creating a smoother appearance and a more representational one as well. We'll add a stronger highlight on the right edge of the eye. And then we'll add a few more marks of our colors, including Van Dyke Brown and Cobalt Blue. For the upper eyelid, we'll add a bit of the color Light Flesh. And then we'll add just a bit of pink. To create a bit of contrast around the eyelid, we'll add a few strokes to indicate the fur. We'll do this with the white pastel pencil initially. Now we can evaluate the upper eyelid, and we see that it needs to be a little bit darker, so we'll add a bit of Van Dyke Brown here. Now we can move on to addressing the first ear. We'll start with the left ear. Since this is a slightly larger area, we can cover it with a traditional stick pastel. I'll start with an application of flesh, work it in with my finger, and then over the top an application of burnt sienna. We'll go back with the flesh color over the top and work these applications in again by blending. Then to lighten the value slightly, we'll add a bit of white. Mostly this is added on the upper portion of the ear. Here again we can blend these applications in with our finger, creating a smooth transition from light to medium value. We'll next start working some of the darker values. Initially, we'll do this with a dark umber. We'll make strokes that mimic the hair inside of the ear and then blend these applications. Around the edges, we'll lighten the value with a white pastel pencil. We can add a bit of variety in the value by adding a bit of Van Dyke Brown over the top. We'll use this Van Dyke Brown around the edges of the ear and inside of the ear too before blending with a blending stop. Now it's back to the flesh tone over the top. A bit of pink is added as well. Now we'll add a few areas of lighter value with the white pastel pencil. As you can see here, layering is very important. 
As is the case with most pastel drawings, the more applications or more layers you create, the more depth you have in the color. So we'll layer multiple applications in many areas throughout this piece to create that depth and color. Over the top, we can start applying some of the strokes that will resemble some of the fur inside of the ear. We'll do this with the white pastel pencil and the black pastel pencil before blending with the blending stop. Then we'll start working some of the areas of fur on the lower portion of the ear. Strokes are made to mimic the direction that the fur grows using a yellow ochre. Over the top, we'll use the light flesh to start creating some of the fur on the upper portion of the head, which overlaps the ear. We'll pull these strokes out quite a bit further. Now to intensify some of the lighter values, we'll use the white pastel pencil. And to create additional contrast, we'll go back with the black pastel pencil. We'll continue making strokes with the black pastel pencil to mimic the fur on the upper left hand portion of the head. Again, these strokes are pulled in the direction that the hair grows, and these are relatively short strokes as well. Over the top of these applications, we can start to develop a bit more variety in the color by adding some additional applications of the yellow ochre and light flesh. In areas, we'll add just a bit of burnt sienna as well. To make a few lighter areas of hair, we'll use the white pastel pencil. We'll continue this process until we have quite a bit of depth and we're creating the illusion of texture as well thanks to the directional strokes that we're making. Again, a bit of light flesh underneath the eye and around the side of the face. Then over the top, a bit of yellow ochre to add a bit more depth. As we develop the fur around the face, we're paying special attention to the directional strokes implied by the fur. Of course, these directional strokes will change direction according to the change of direction that happens on the fur. Not only will these strokes create the illusion of texture, but they also help to create the illusion of form as well. Often, these directional strokes will change direction according to a change of form on the face. We'll continue switching back and forth between our different colors, black, light flesh, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. We'll also apply a few applications of white in areas as well. Now we'll blend these applications using the blending stop, again pulling the blending stop in the direction that the hair grows. Then we'll go back with additional applications. As you can see here, this process is a patient one. It's important to take your time and allow the layers to do the work for you. With a sharpened white pastel pencil, we can add a few highlighted areas of fur. We'll define the edge of the left side of the face a little bit further with the white pastel pencil as well, as bits of light are reaching around the face and creating this outline. Then we'll continue with our directional strokes on the face, just underneath the eye, and then around to the upper portion of the head. Again, these directional strokes change direction according to the form of the head. We'll continue this process throughout the rest of the face using the white pastel pencil. Now we'll address the second ear, and we'll do it in the same manner that we addressed the first. We'll start with a flesh color, apply it, and work it in with our finger. Then over the top, just a bit of burnt sienna. To darken some of the value, we'll apply the burnt umber. And then a bit of pink in areas. We'll add a bit of white here as well. And again, blend the transition from the lighter portion, which is at the end of the ear, to the darker portion closer to the center. Then we'll address some of the values and colors around the outside of the ear, starting with Van Dyke Brown. We'll darken this with a bit of black. We'll add the black in a couple of other areas within the ear as well, and then gently blend these applications into the tooth of the paper using the blending stump. A bit of light flesh is used in between the two darker values on the upper portion of the ear, and then in a few areas within the ear as well. 
we'll use this same color to pull out a few directional strokes to indicate the fur within the ear. And then we'll make the values a bit lighter with an application of white. We'll stick with the white pastel pencil and create a few more directional strokes, indicating the edge of the head, differentiating it from the ear behind it. Now we can turn our attention to the nose and we'll start with an application of Sanguine. Over the top, we'll make a few applications with Burnt Sienna. Then to lighten the value even further, a bit of light flesh. Then we can start working some of the darker values. For this, we'll use black. The black pastel pencil is applied in the areas of the nostrils, around the nose, and within the indentation that happens in the center of the nose as well. These applications appear pretty harsh at the beginning, but we can soften them up by using the blending stump to work these applications into the paper. We can lighten the values slightly with a bit of white on the upper portion of the nose, and then we can define the edges further again with the white pastel by pulling out marks that mimic the texture of the fur. Now we can go back to the side of the face. As you can see here, we're working our way down from the top of the paper to the bottom for the most part. We'll start to define some of the shadowed areas on the left side of the face since our dominant light source is originating from the right. To do this, we'll add a bit of gray and a bit of black as well. Then we can soften these applications using our finger and the blending stump to blend them. There's quite a bit of shadow underneath the cat, so we'll add a bit of black in here as well, and again, blend these applications, this time with a blending stop. We'll add a bit of shadow underneath the upper portion of the mouth, and then again, blend these applications with the blending stop. We'll need to create a transition of value on the visible part of the body of the cat. To do this, we'll add a bit of gray over the top of the black, and then a bit of white at the top. Then using our finger, we can blend these transitions. Underneath the head, with the gray, we'll make a few directional strokes to indicate a bit of fur. We can become more refined with these marks using the dark gray pastel pencil. We'll return to this area in a moment, but for now, we'll continue developing the illusion of fur on the side of the face and on the bottom portion of the face. We'll revisit this area with a bit of the light flesh. And then we'll make some of the highlights a bit stronger with the white pastel pencil. Using the blending stump, we'll blend a few of these applications, again pulling the blending stump in the direction that the hair grows. We can make the shadow underneath the upper portion of the lip a bit stronger with an additional application of the black pastel pencil. With the blending stomp that already has quite a bit of black pastel on it, we can create a few impressions of indentations for the whiskers. We can refine these shapes using the white pastel pencil. We'll define the edge of the head a bit further, differentiating it from the body using the white pastel pencil. We'll ease the transition from light to dark on the body with an additional application of gray and blend this in with our finger. Then over the top, we'll use the light flesh color to further define the lower portion of the head of the cat. The same color is used to create some longer strokes to give the impression of the fur on the body. We'll create a stronger highlight on the upper portion of the body using the white pastel pencil. Even on the lighter side of the face of the cat, there are a few areas of slightly darker value. We'll address this with an application of the gray pastel. Then over the top, we'll use the white pastel pencil to pull out directional strokes. Before putting the finishing touches on the fur, we'll revisit the eye and increase the darkness of the shadow just underneath the eyelid on the right eye. Again, we'll blend this with the blending stump. And again with the blending stump, we'll blend all the applications of fur that are remaining, resulting in a more natural appearance. Now of course we'll need to add a bit of color underneath the cat, and for this we'll use a light cream color. Of course we'll blend these applications with our finger before establishing some of the darker values. The darker values are established with a darker brown. Then for highlights, we'll add a bit of white, and again blend these applications. 
With some color underneath the cat, we can now go back and refine some of the shadowed areas underneath the head and body. We'll do this again with the black pastel pencil. These areas are gently blended using the blending stop. We can then refine the edge of the head using the white pastel pencil, overlapping the color that we just laid down. Now we're ready to add those long whiskers. We'll make sure that our white pastel pencil is nice and sharpened, and then we'll pull deliberate strokes out from the head, overlapping the background. Of course, we'll add whiskers on the side of the face as well. A few darker and shorter whiskers are added with the black pastel pencil. And now our pastel drawing of a cat is complete. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel? And if you want to learn even more, then I encourage you to check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans, and much, much more. To learn more about the program, just click on the button in the center of your screen or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. Thank you so much for watching.